So George A. Ramiro disses The Walking Dead, calling it a soap opera. I came across this a couple of days after a friend of mine, Justin, and I were sitting down uh, smoking. Um, what we were smoking is up to your imagination, but we were sitting down and we were talking, and he said that he was very excited for The Walking Dead spinoffs. I told him I'm not a fan of the fans of The Walking Dead. Don't I, I'm not an anti-fan. Um, and an anti-fan, and I'll post that in the link, it, it'll be down there. By the time you're watching this, it is down there. But I've got uh, Bandwagon, uh, 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 Die Hard fans, whatever, and I've got anti-fans. Now, um, uh, fan loyalty is what I've got. I've got Bandwagon Effect, fan loyalty, and anti-fan. Uh, an anti-fan is basically just as bad as a fan. You're still giving it attention. You're still making anti-Twilight merchandise, for instance. And you still got to pay royalties to Twilight. So money is still going into Stephanie Meyer and whoever the fuck decided to take on that project. Um, and as much as I said this, um, this was one of the things that I said in a post about The Walking Dead. While I agree with both Jatoria and Beth, I will say that I have nothing against the zombie fad. I am not an anti-fan of the show. My gripe is with the people that jump on the bandwagon. I guess I have a pet peeve. Uh, not with diehard fans, but those that blow it out of proportion. Take Twilight, for example. While I think the author has the writing skills of a four-year-old blind dog, I don't have a personal issue with the books. The fans are what ruined it for me. Uh, when I watched the first episode of The Walking Dead, there wasn't memes. Uh, there wasn't Team Daryl or whatever. It was pure entertainment. I feel... The same way about the Juggalos these days and the nitpicking and the complaining over small things. This is my thought. George A. Ramirez has every right to say what he uh, to say what he wants uh, about The Walking Dead. He is the father of the zombie entertainment business. He can say whatever he wants. I'm just saying the show is okay, but the fans are bothering me. And television, music, books, and movies cater to these people that take part in the team. Whomever or memes are just ridiculous and mindless things that have no real rhyme or reason. When people take it too far, it becomes a problem with me. Nine times out of ten, if I don't uh, if I don't affiliate or associate with the music group, book, series, etc., it is simply because the fans killed it. The fans are ruining The Walking Dead for me. Now, do I feel that I should stop watching The Walking Dead? No, but I'm not going to post anything on it. Other than this video... For this topic of discussion, look at this as a thesis. Now, I threw in the Juggalos in there. Why? As much as it's a conflict of interest in what I am doing, off the records, and this is in no way, uh, shape, or form, uh, the opinions that of Juggalo News or anybody associated or affiliated with that website, these are my personal opinions. I am not speaking to you as somebody who is on Juggalo News right now. Um, I am not on the clock, so to speak. I am not doing anything right this second that has anything to do with that website this is my personal thoughts thought i put that out there um so that way no one goes and hassles you want to bitch me out comment down here anyway so now that i've got all that out of the way my gripe is with uh there was this meme i saw the other day uh just yesterday maybe the other day i don't know but it was a uh, person uh griping about you know when did this become this. I've edited pictures. I've, I've taken time out of my day to edit pictures for people and make pictures look nice. So somebody spent at least with the loading time and everything like that to, to, to really focus on making this. That upsets me. The same thing with some of these Walking Dead things, which is mostly posted by the Walking Dead people, so they've got time on their hands and they've got all the money to spend and there's absolutely nothing pressing. Uh, but a lot of it's fan-made. Um, you see a lot of... You see a lot of... Well, you see a lot of fan stuff. You, you, you see a lot of fan edits, fan clips, fan re-sequels or whatever the fuck. And what bothers me is... 
the fans, really. Like, I am an anti-fan of the fans. Like, I don't blame Twilight for the shit that's been put out. I blame the fans because the fans have made it to where I don't even want to associate or even look at a Twilight book. If I didn't know what Twilight was, and if it wasn't for the fans, and I saw that book, odds are, out of morbid curiosity, I'd check it out. All right, and this is all. This is nothing that I said on the whole Walking Dead thing. Uh, I thought the first season was pretty good. I, 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 I watch it when I when I can because I want to know what the game plan is for the producers and see if they can't, you know, uh, see, see if I can't see a uh, downhill slide. And um, I'm almost certain that when the spinoffs start popping up, we will see more Team Georgia versus Team Arizona with zombies on them or whatever. Because when people, because then, because then people will fight over which spinoff survival group is better. I see the fans in the in the uh, excessive obsession, and, and I start to lose faith in humanity. You can see a lot of the anti fans are just as bad as the fans. Look at some of the train wreck videos on YouTube. Term that I'm trying to coin. Both are childish, and you're almost embarrassed to be watching them. It's like that on Facebook lately, which is why I go and post my own stuff, that I share with my research that I do, so rumors can be put to a stop. And if something changes, I can post something else for an update. People need to be more unbiased and more open, but the anti-fans are doing what the fans are doing. That's counterproductive and the definition of irony at its best. Quoted. So... What I'm getting at with The Walking Dead, with fans, with Twilight, with Juggalos, because I told you this wasn't a Juggalo YouTube channel, I'm, I'm showing you why I stepped away from a lot of what's been going on. Because it, there is a lot of excessiveness and, and, and obsessiveness, and, and it's nothing productive. It, if it was productive, okay, I have Asperger's, I am... Uh, genetically already have OCD, born with, didn't get it from any situation in my life or whatever where I didn't have control. No, no, no. When you have Asperger's, you've got a whole list of things in your genetics that's just given to you at birth. And what I go through is I go through obsessive compulsive. I go through quick, fast, angry spurts. Um, I have a hard time staying on topic, which doesn't come from ADD or ADHD. It's just a symptom of Asperger's, where one thought will trigger a thought, and then you jump to that, and no one has any idea what's going on in your brain, but to you it makes sense. Um, there's other things with Asperger's that I'm not even going to get into, although I probably should. I'll do it later at another time. Like I told you, I'd get to this video and do something else, and I never got to doing that, so... Like I said, that's Asperger's at its finest. You're watching this, you get what you pay for, and it's free. Um, the reason why I brought this up is because I, I, I am a fan of music, I am a fan of art, I am a fan of entertainment, but there are a couple of people whom I pay attention to, and I'm getting to that right now, um, that I, I actually really, really appreciate. Um, I... I, I I appreciate a lot of what's being said, what's going on, and it puts a smile on my face. It's like reading the morning newspaper. A lot of people go up and check on Facebook on their favorite posts or what music artists did what. I know I do the same. But this is something that actually got my attention, and I want to read this to you guys. Uh, you got angry at George Bush. Obama, he broke your heart. You follow every news lead. You, you stand, chant, yeah, you stand, chant, tell others to wake up. Uh, use large words on the girls around you. You see yourself as a revolutionary as you Google modern day history. Everyone needs to wake up. Way, way too old to be a Prince Charming. Your words you speak are fresh to the co-eds. Sure, your mother says you are a good boy. She tucks you in into bed and, and it's your 30th birthday. If only Ron Paul would have won, it would have changed it all. What went wrong? Those sheep just didn't, did not wake up. Don't worry, Mom, don't worry, Mom will make you feel better. Kiss her boy and tuck you in tonight. Uh, tell you someday how you will find a nice girl. You go to work and play with your phone on break, informing everyone of the news of the day. Posting about The Walking Dead, the latest hip trends, dreaming away of the pretty girls you've seen. 
you are a hero on the internet. These guys at work, they are dead. They don't see what's going down. Back home in your room, smoking weed and video games, checking out what Alex Jones had to say. He wakes people up. All your classmates have all gone. They got old and don't see. They don't get it. And they never will wake up. As you call them to ask what's going on, they are busy to care. You look out the window. Deep down you know. There's nothing in the streets for you anymore. If only one if those if only one of those young pretty girls hanging out at the seven eleven would give you a chance. The smell of their perfume and spark in their eyes, you don't mind the evil words they they spit at you, asking, What are you looking at? What went wrong? Mom will take you in tonight. Tell her little boy uh we'll be all all will be all right. You will find yourself a nice girl, Mom will tell you not to worry. Such a good boy, off to off you go to sleep, dreaming away of the day. Your brilliant mind will be discovered. All the others just don't see it, and they will all pay. They think they know about the government. All those bands they like, they are sellouts. The wives are going to cheat on them. I told them Obama would not change anything. I told Mom, and she agreed with me. I told the guys at work I posted it. The girl is a bitch at the 7-Eleven, and she is going to wish she went out with me. I won't get her weed anymore. She thinks she knows music, that shit she was listening to. She don't remember 9-11, I do. You don't even notice the calendar dates. Only in the mirror uh, is in your face. Y your mind's the same. Your skin changed. That little Disney girl of your dreams is married in 23. There are new kids on the corner you walk past, and one girl asks you, you work with you, you work with my dad. Your thoughts turn to guilt about what went about what went on in your head. Sir, are you okay? Nothing wrong, you say. You go alone to the reunion concert of your favorite band. Now everyone is seated nice in the chairs. Back in the day, nothing is the way you remember it. It's, it's all gone. Um... Then came the day mom passed away on the same day you graduate. You go numb and feel cold. You step out into a different world. Months, months go flying past in your mind. Tears of how this world was not so kind. One night you close your eyes for the first time in the morning. You wake up, you will be okay. You will find a good woman to love you. And this is written by my friend Kelly. And what I loved is that you could see it in two different ways. And I, I love psychology, I love sociology, I love the minds of people, I love so many different things about people and the way that we work and the way that we run and the way that we're, you know, in tune. What I liked about that is someone's going to go, no, 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 you know, I, my mother said that to me, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be great one day, I, I, I'm, I'm a brilliant person with an IQ of 500, I'm a genius, my mom said so, your mom is also biased. However, a lot of people can honestly say, you know, no, my mother was right. She told me I could go out and do anything I wanted to go and do, and I did it. Whether it's, you know, you went out and wanted to be a bum, or you went out and started your own corporation, or whatever. But what I thought was really interesting about that, and I don't know if Kelly deliberately meant to do this or not, but she's talking about the mother babying this person up until they're 35, which... A lot of people could say is um, is what mothers offer. It's what mothers are there for. It's times of the economy and stuff like that. Um, because if, if um, I remember correctly, Kelly wrote this thing about, you know, to, uh, rather than talk about change and what have you, talk about peace and love and the things that you can change rather than the things you cannot. Um, we cannot go back in time and, and elect somebody over Obama. We cannot go back in time and do this, that, and the other. Um, but what we can do, pardon me, a little parched, so I'm going to stay here and have a drink. Um, one of the things that I appreciate about Kelly is, is, is the things that she writes and what she writes about. Um, for instance, when you look at the, the, the back, back home in your room smoking weed and video games, Checking out what Alex Jones had to say. Well, those who do not know and those who live under a rock or, you know, have the IQ of a, of a, of a dead horse. Um, 
Alex Jones is a, not only is he a conspiracy theorist, but he's also from the state of Texas, which is very Republican, very gun carrying. And he, he shows secrets and he shows things. And, and back uh, on VHS, he releases one tape. I watched it's like, um, forget the name of it, but it, when he was doing it on VHS, I'm not sure if he still does it now, but uh, my friend's got a couple of VHS tapes, Masters of, Masters of War, Masters of Destruction, maybe. Um, he says, you know, buy this tape. It's for the production of the tape or whatever, but make copies of it. Go ahead, duplicate this. You're not going to go and see, you know, uh, you know, FBI warnings on it. Don't, don't, don't make duplicates or whatever. No, he, he urges you to make copies of these and show it to people and try and wake people up. And, and I can see where Alex Jones is coming from and the way I see it. There is money in conspiracy theory just as much as there is in Republicans and Democrats and, and, and living civilly and whatever. But what I think Kelly is actually trying to get across, and if I'm wrong, she'll correct me, um, which I hope she does. But what I think she's trying to get across is that you change what's going on in your life. You're going home smoking weed and playing video games. A girl over at 7-Eleven was being a snob, and you walked away. Yeah, you didn't deserve it, but if you spoke up, if you had said something just then, you know, if you would have made a decision, no, I'm not going to smoke this joint right now, or if you, instead of playing video games, you smoked the joint, you know, or, you know, you could have done it either way, like, how I would have done it is, I don't play video games all that much, like, I went over and checked out my, my friend's Wii U, and I'm like an 80-year-old blind deaf guy trying to figure out how a Wii works. The new Wii U, like I'm sitting there doing this and turning this and looking around like this, and I couldn't figure it out. So I, I, I test new models. I, I try and get into the new generation of things because I'm 23 years old and going on 24 soon. And yeah, it's fucked up how I don't understand a lot of technology. Like, I got. I turned on this computer right here, right? I turned on this computer. I had no clue. No clue what the hell was going on. Because when it first came up, it was all these icons. Like like you would have on your Kindle, your iPhone. However the fuck those work. This is my phone, which doesn't even give me a text message alert. I have to actually look at the screen. Because I don't understand technology. Um, I don't understand why they would release a phone with a bug where you didn't get a text alert. But, you know, she's saying you make the choices. You decide to sit there, smoke pot, and play video games. Changing nothing, doing nothing, buying into corporate money. Corporations own lobbyists. Kind of own politicians. But that's what she's saying. She's saying, you know, you, you want to talk about. You want to talk, and you want to talk, and you want to talk, and everyone's asleep, and you need to wake people up. We tried Occupy, and Occupy failed, and I already discussed why Occupy failed. In one of my videos, that was a response to Nappy J back when he was doing YouTube videos. But things aren't changing. We're, we're, we're all confined into our happy little worlds, and that's what we're going to obsess on. Here's my end of my thesis right here. How I combined The Walking Dead. How I combined The Juggalos. How I combined all this Twilight shit. It's these same people who I see getting into The Walking Dead have similar music taste. A lot of these people will associate... Let me give you an example here. There's a comment that was made. Let me find it here. Um, I actually liked it. Yes. Right here. Mm. Also, this has got to be one of the best things I think I have ever read, which sums up this entire conversation and why I said this. This is from Beth Ann. She is a sweetheart. Um, and 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 Jatoria and and the girls who I talk to on Facebook are fucking brilliant and I love each and every one of them. They're, they're so, you, you'll see what I mean. 
Uh, my problem is with the non-stop zombie stuff like World War Z. It's the same as everyone is rapping about uh, face-painted serial killer. Be original. Come up with your own idea. Yeah, I'm going to be the zombie vampire rapping serial killer juggalette. I know there was a bunch of old white-haired men at the desk trying to get their best marketing uh, away, to, away to me. Um, uh, trying to figure out what I'm, what I'm into and taking old scripts and ideas, molding it together and fail. Beat the idea to death. My God, I can't even stand it anymore to be honest with you. Ow, ow, I'm not like the others. You see, I'm different. I'm a rapping wolf. I'm not a clown, you see. Uh, they even fess up to me when begging me to make uh, fan art and post and, and post I like them. Fuck you, I say. You can't even get your own fans to post? One guy dresses up like a villain from the last Batman movie. What the fuck? He went to the Halloween store? I got this great idea, everyone. The rapping Frankenstein monster concept CD and the rapping Bride of Frankenstein. The kids will love it. Maybe a graphic comic book to go with it. Because people are lacking originality, and people are trying to combine things where it's like, you know, well, you know the guy from The Walking Dead? Well, I'm back, and I'm going to be him. It's the same thing Charles Plain was talking about in his horrorcore video. But it's not with just horrorcore anymore. Major corporations are doing shit like this. Look at the commercials that are on TV. They are patronizing you, condescending you, talking down to you. That woman on that progressive commercial is, ah, she's mocking you. Her existence on that commercial is... For the average American. These commercials are for the average American. So your average American is a dumb shit fucker who is speaking to you in very tiny words and very slowly with something funny because you're going to sit there and go, huh, 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 uh, funny. Granted, there are funny commercials out there that, you know, I believe are Super Bowl commercial worthy. One of my favorite commercials from years ago, and I've seen it once, uh, was uh, the big built guy who was in that gym. He was like, and over here are the weights. I pick things up and I push them down. And over here's the bathrooms. I pick things up and I push them down. And that was absolutely hysterical. And I thought that was funny. But I'm not going to go to that gym because, well, one, we don't have one out here. And plus, I'd rather work out with some buddies over at their place and have a stereo system where it's blaring loud down in the basement where there's fucking, you know, bench presses and shit. But, that's also part of Asperger's, I don't like big crowds. Um, but that's what I'm saying. You know, the, the Juggalos and stuff like that. Like, it's really hard to find a good music artist now to listen to. Um, because they're, they're so generic and there's so many out there that they're kind of ruining it for the ones that are doing a good job. I'll give you, I'll give you an example. I listened to this guy three weeks ago. I can't even remember his name. Pumpkinhead. And this guy comes out. Pumpkin King. Pumpkin Face. I actually talked about him with Joey. Quote is in one of my interviews. It's also on my YouTube channel. I'm sitting there and I'm talking with him. And and and, and Joe and I were discussing this guy. I, I'd seen a picture of him, but I thought it was just some cheap ass gimmick. He tried mixing rock music with rap music and it, it, it ruined it for me. But then you see somebody who's got skills and somebody who, who, who's got awesome collaborations and shit. Fucking Des Luca the Cannibal. Fucking all these guys. Des Luca's the one who stands out in my mind because when I first started up everything, Des Luca popped up my page. Um, I'd never heard any of his stuff. I knew this guy was busting ass doing collaborations and whatnot. And I'm like, this, this guy's busting ass. This guy's all right. And then I, I got into um, uh, MCF, the Monster City Freaks. And then I was introduced to Blood X. And these guys have got skills. Like, I love listening to these guys. These guys are on my fucking MP3 player. But there is one music artist out there who does not focus on their music and needs to. And I'm calling this motherfucker out to do another album. And if you have not gotten to talk to him about this, comment on it. Uh, check out some of his uh, stuff. I, this is one song on YouTube. I didn't get a chance to, you know bootleg it because I really did like it and I like movie songs and, and catchphrases. But this guy does not focus on horrorcore. This guy's got, you know, some angry songs. But this guy is very intelligent. And it, and it comes out in his lyrics. Like, one of my favorite songs, and I knew it was going to be my favorite, 
scapegoat, and this music artist is without a without a doubt Child's Play Ninja. Like I, I, I love senseless music. I love senseless music. And don't get me wrong. I, 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 I love listening to fun songs. I love listening to party songs. I love listening to horrorcore. I love listening to metal, some metal. I love listening to rock. But Child's Play Ninja came up with Raya, which was a self-titled album, which is fucking brilliant, like, genius, and he talks about shit like this in this album, and he talks about this, that, and the other, and, 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 and Child's Play is the one who, who, who really got me into new music and stuff like that, and, and, and he's given me constructive criticism, and, and he's actually, you know, walked me through a lot of things, um, a couple of people have, they've done that for me, like, I, I've said something, and it was completely just outright wrong or it was misinterpreted or but they walk me through it you know people have the patience to do that for me because rather than just me saying something and then getting ridiculed for it rather than trying to figure out what i'm trying to say it's bogus but this video is getting a little lengthy so i'm a cut it here by the way peep out beth ann and kelly and jocelyn ninja on facebook